Hello, it's T Razzy Raz, and we have one of these. Would you look at this? It is a DC motor. You can see the two terminals here, and a gearbox. See, there's there's gears in there. Um, so instead of spinning very very fast like it normally does, the gearbox will slow it right down. We will get slow speed and very high torque, which is a lot of force. We also have one of, oh, where did it go? It ran away from me, it ran, oh, no, there it is. We have a micro bit. So how do we get them talking to each other? Well, that's what we'll learn in this video. But first, we have another part, which is this. There you go, this will help get us talking to each other. The micro bit, this one here, hey, does not have enough power to drive one of these. These pins here can only pull a few milliamps, which is not much current at all. Not much electrical power. So, we will grab one of these and put it... Eh. Ooh, it should go really gently, actually. Ah, what a satisfying click in this um, motor driver board. Hmm, nice, okay. But Mr. Aneri, how does this help? Surely it still has a power problem. Well, you can plug in another source of power. Let's put this the right way up. Right here. There you go, it says power there, can you see that? And the power is 4.5 volts to 6 volts, anywhere in that range. Uh, we're gonna plug the negative in this one and the positive in that one. And then because we have an external power source, and this has motor driver chips on it, it will be able to drive the motor. Cool. All right. So what other wiring do we need? Well, we will need to plug in a power source. Where are we going to find a power source that is between 4.5 and 6 volts? Well, maybe, just maybe, one of... These! Oh, it's a USB power bank! USB runs at 5 volts! That's perfect for us! That's awesome! Oh, but now we've got a problem. Because now, oh, all these parts, all these parts. Uh, we need this thing here, it needs to accept power from here. The screw terminal, I should say, the screw terminal needs to accept power from this USB power bank. But it doesn't, it just doesn't go, does it? Hmm. Well, we give up and cry. No, we don't. We have USB at one end, alligator clips at the other. Huh. Huh. Now, if you are lucky, if you are, then you might be able to squeeze it on. Let's, let's see if we can just squeeze the alligator clips onto here. Very conveniently, the colors match. Red is positive. Red is positive. Neat. Um, a screwdriver would help. If only I had one. If only I had a flathead screwdriver. Oh, like one of these. Ha. Um, I probably should have put all these implements at the start of the video, hey? So let's unscrew this, because they start quite tight. There we go. Neato, neato. And hopefully, we can plug the red into the red. Er, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Put that in that hole. Oh, I think it's just... Ooh. <laughs> just barely makes it. Oh, no, it clicks off. <sighs> well, can we have some more solid connection? And the answer is yes. What if... In here, we plugged the red connection in there. Haha! -ha. This is a called a male to male breadboard jumper wire. So I happen to have a red one, but you might find it difficult to find a red one. So that's okay. You can use whatever colour is available. But I'll screw this in. There we go, nice and tight. Just firm enough, you don't have to go too crazy. And now this is a nice secure connection. I can do the same for a black one. Black wire in. 
There you go. Black side there. Again, if you can't find a matching color, that's okay. It doesn't really matter. But what is important is that the black wire from your alligator clip goes to this one. Black. All right. Plug that in there. Do the same for the E for the red one here. So what have I got? I have an alligator clip and oh it's getting quite messy. The red goes to the positive and the black one goes to negative. And hopefully if I plug it in hmm Well, that was anticlimactic, wasn't it? Hmm. Any lights going on in this thing? No. What if I plug it back in? Hmm. Well, maybe let's try writing a program for it and then see if it lights up. To do that, we will need a micro USB cable. Micro USB. Ooh, it's a very blurry connector, apparently. But it's the one that comes with your micro bit. Mine is quite long. Yours is probably quite short. Eh, there we go. All right. Hmm, black, red. That does seem like the right connection. And now we are ready to write some code for our micro bit that is going to activate the motor. You can write your code in one of two ways. You can do it using the Grok Learning Playground. Uh, this gives you a simulator that lets you write code with all these different things already set up in a simulator here. It lets you press the buttons and see what would happen even if you don't have a micro bit handy. Or you can do what I'm going to do today and use the official micro bit Python editor. This one is really cool because you can hit connect and connect it to your micro bit and download it straight away. So I would recommend that you, for now, it might be easier to use this one, um, connect it and you will be able to follow along. Uh, yes, this one doesn't have a simulator. Okay, let's try running this program. I'm going to press flash. This code here will appear as soon as you visit the site. It's the default site. I did that, and my micro bit is doing something. Awesome. That program is permanently on the micro bit. So if I unplug it, what? It still works. This is five volts. This has a voltage converter on it, which converts it to 3.3 volts that powers the micro bit. Cool, okay. But I thought this video was about um, getting the motors working. Hmm. Well, that's fine. We have one of these guys. Has two pins. If one of them is positive and the other one is negative, in other words, if they are at a different voltage, one of them is high and the other one is low, then electricity will flow through the motor and it will spin in some direction. If you flip them around, then it will spin the other direction. To show how this works, mm, here's a lovely diagram. Thanks, EBLCDC. If the, this one is positive and that one is negative, the motor will spin one way. Uh, no. You know what? I don't like that diagram. Let's go to this one. If this one's positive and that one's negative, it will spin one way. But if you flip it, then they will spin the other way. So let's see what that looks like in code. We want one of these pins to be uh, on, you know, it's highest voltage and one of them to be on low voltage. One of them to be on and the other to be off. So, hmm, I will reconnect my Python. So I'm going to plug it in. There we go. Cool. Uh, so now it's plugged into my computer. Now I can go into the Python editor and press connect. Yippee, hopefully it is working. And let's flash 
Actually, I don't even need to flash the program. We checked that it works before. Hmm, I want to turn one pin on and the other off. But which pins? If I have a look very carefully, then I can plug a motor in right here. I need pin 12 and pin 8. So I can turn pin 12 on and pin 8 off. Let's write the code first and then plug it in. Pin 12 on and pin 8 off. I can do this in a loop or I can just do this one off. I'm going to do this just one off. Pin, I've, I've forgotten already what pin numbers they were. They were 12 on and 8 off. That should spin it in one direction. Pin 12 dot, hmm, write digital, digital write, I can't remember. If you get stuck, you can click help and go documentation. And then that will give you lots of advice on how to use all of these things. Input and output will tell you how to turn one of these things on or off. I think. There we go. Write digital. One or a zero. One is on and zero is off. So we want to write one of them off. And then the other one. Sorry. One of them on. And then pin eight. We can turn that off. So this should turn... One of the pins on, pin 12 on, and pin 8 off. If pin 12 is on, and pin 8 is off, then that one will be on, that one will be off, and when we plug our motor into these things, it should spin, because they are different. Hmm, well let's put our program on. I will hit flash, and you'll see this says flashing micro bit, it takes a while, gives you a tick. The first one is very, very, very slow but the ones after are much quicker. See, if I do it again, then uh, it's actually quite fast once you've done the first one. If I look at the thing now, it says N-A-M-E-E-R-R-O. -E -E that is really hard to read, isn't it? Hmm. To go through the errors a little bit easier, go back to the editor and press this open serial button. And that will let you communicate with it. Pin, un oh, pin underscore write digital. That's not what it's called. It's a little bit different. Let's close the serial. Notice I've got pin 12 dot write digital. This is the name of the function and this is the name of the object. They're separated by a dot. But I did this one different. So let's replace that with a dot. So if you do get an error, go open serial. That might make it easier. All right, let's flash this program now. And hopefully it doesn't come up with an error. Yeah, mine it just doesn't do anything, so that's a good sign, I guess. If I look at the serial, not much seems to be happening. It started. Uh, if I close serial, let's put it away. Well, now I can connect my motor. All right, and this will be the last thing that we do in the video, is to plug in this motor, and hopefully it will spin. To do that, you will need... <laughs> alligator clips. Chumpy, 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 chumpy. Chumpy, chumpy, chumpy. Um, the color of the alligator clips doesn't matter at all, but I'm going to connect one of them here and put this to the motor. The other one, actually I'll get these both ready on the motor. Um, the other one I'll plug here. There we go. Eh, get on there. So, move that up there, out of the way a little bit. I'll also move my power a little bit further away. So with the motor, we are using pin 12 and pin 8. So one of them needs to go to pin 12 and one goes to pin 8. It doesn't matter because if it doesn't work the way you want, you can always reverse them. I'm going to loosen these bolts. Not so much that they fall out, because if they fall out, we will never find them again. And then I will need to order lots more of them. So we'll just loosen them so that they are loose. Now, I can plug one of them. This one is to pin 8. Notice that I can make the jaws big enough here to go straight directly to it. There we go. Um, this has come loose. Hmm. I wonder why it isn't working. Well, let's go to the code. 
code change. Hmm. Ah, this is the one. Pin 12 on, pin 8 off. That really seems fine to me. It uploads correctly. Do you know what? I think this thing's... Oopsie, I'll get back to the camera. I think this thing has gone flat. If I plug it in... Oh, there we go. It does light up. So it's not quite flat yet. Hmm. Pin 12, pin 8. It definitely has power because the light is on. If I unplug it, does the light stay on? Hmm. Interesting. It is probably not a very solid connection. You might want to think how we would make this a better connection. What we would do is we would solder wires here. Some breadboard wires like these. Then if they're soldered here, they'll be a very good connection. They can be clamped in here with the terminal blocks and the screws, and then it won't go anywhere. For now, we're using the alligator clips. They're a little bit fiddly. It's hard to get them just quite right. I've noticed this seems a little bit loose. Maybe I will try motor two. Yeah, I'll have to unscrew it. Yours may well have worked on motor one. You might just be a lot luckier than me. If I plug into motor two, here we go, which is pin 16 and pin zero. I don't know if you can see that, but I've got pin 16 and pin zero there. I can change my code. Oh, not that one. <sighs> pin 16 and pin zero. I will need to plug it in in order to program it. Connect it. Flash it. Oopsie. I put the 16 and the 0 in the wrong place. Pin 16 and pin 0. Silly me. Oh! I don't know if you heard that, but it's gone bonkers! Yay! Aha! <laughs> One of them fell off. You can see what I mean? The alligators are really good for testing because they're very easy to connect. But if you want a more permanent connection, you will need to solder breadboard wires like this, one to there, and a different one to there, and then you can clamp them down and they won't go anywhere. All right, so. There we go. Beautiful. And that is how you get the thing spinning. Yay! In the next video, I will show you how to get it spinning forwards, backwards, left and right. See ya!